Hey guys, thank you so much for attending this uh, podcast slash interview. I'm here with Adam Farfin, who's a financial expert, entrepreneur, and investor. Adam has been traveling the world uh, for a very long time. He's been a six-figure earner from the time he was a teenager. He hung out with the, cat, the people from Real Social Dynamics in the Hollywood Hills. He met people like John Maxwell, Ice-T, Bill Nye, Seth MacFarlane, Tony Shea, Shaquille O'Neal, and many more celebrities. Uh, he also mentored dozens of startups and worked with many multi-million dollar companies and helped create more than $500 million in value. He's here to help you maximize your wealth, save on taxes, and get access to tools that only the top wealthiest people in the world have access to. So, Adam, thank you so much for being with us today, and I'd love to get some of your knowledge. Robbie, thanks so much for having me, man. It's been uh, it's been great getting to know you the last uh, little while, and uh, it's great the fact that you and I have uh, you know a little bit of similar backgrounds. And uh, I love what you're doing and the kind of service that you give your clients. And I'm excited to go ahead and actually uh, you know bring value to your people as well. So uh, thanks for having me. Nice, thank you, thank you so much. So I'd like to start off with a very simple question: How do you become a six figure earner as a teenager? Well, you've got to have the right environment. I think the number one thing is definitely environment. I, you know, it, it, when, when you talk about, when people talk about you are a byproduct of the people you associate yourself with, it is, it's actually bigger than, than people realize. It's not just a matter of just who your friends are and stuff like that. It really comes back down to simple things, including energy that you're around that will go ahead and actually help you elevate the way you think about things, your paradigm. You know, I remember my mentor said to me even a couple of weeks ago, he says, you change, you help somebody alter, change their paradigm, that will change absolutely the reality, right? When I first learned about this industry, uh, you know, keep in mind that I didn't really have, you know, the tools that a lot of people have today. And, and believe it or not, I'm, I'm actually grateful the fact that it happened. I didn't have every shiny toy or every, you know, single opportunity that was out there. I just got involved with some people that were in, in finance. I had, my, I had met, a, you know, people that were doing it. They were doing very well doing it themselves. And all I did was just simulate, imitate, duplicate exactly what they were doing. So me making a good amounts of money back then was just a byproduct of what everybody else was doing around me. Does that make sense? Yeah, one of the guys was, uh, one of the guys was actually making, you know, 250, the other guy was making 500, the, other guy, the lowest guy at our office was 125,000. And at that time, six figures was a lot of money. And for me, it was just one of those things that you kind of had to do. I didn't know any better. I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't even know. I knew that we were not, you know, with my family, we didn't have a lot of money, but I didn't really know how much my dad made. So it was actually years later where I felt like, holy crap, I'm actually making more money than most people that are out there. And, you know, I could afford a better lifestyle and stuff like that. But it wasn't really till later because all I was doing was just simply, you know, uh, emulating, duplicating what people were doing, you know what I mean, in the industry. So that's how it happened. Yeah. And, and tell me, how did you, how did you get yourself around these kind of people though? Because, uh, you know, I, I started off from a very kind of middle-class background and uh, the highest earning person I knew, I knew was like maybe just a guy in high tech. Like how do you actually get access to these kinds of high level people in the first place? Yeah, it was interesting because I uh, I actually grew up uh, like a, a Mormon kid in Utah, <laughs> and uh, there was actually a guy in uh, my church that I would go to. Who actually, had a nice, fairly nice lifestyle. Uh, this guy had a nice black Mercedes, and you know, he had a nice home with a pool, and you know, it was it was it was interesting that we were even in, within the same paradigm to be able to go to the same church. I mean, in the you know, same location. I mean. And uh, it was interesting because one day this guy walked, you know, this guy went, you know, was at my parents' house. And I remember coming down the stairs and this guy was there, you know, and he wasn't there talking to my dad about, you know, uh, church stuff. He was there talking to my dad about financial services. And uh, he wanted my dad to do insurance, investments and stuff like that. And, and my dad wasn't interested. In fact, he was actually trying to get my dad to work with them. And my dad wasn't interested, but I was. And I remember, I remember two simple things. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I didn't, I, dude, I had, I, I barely could finish high school for credit out loud, right? So I didn't really have a high IQ. I didn't really have, a, you know, a massive world of opportunities. I didn't, you know, have a, you know, a, a, anything, right? But I remember him telling two things that stuck with me. He says to my dad, the financial service is a high speed profession. And all my dad had to do is get a simple license, 
right, to go ahead and do this. And my ears went up. And I remember the first thing that I thought about, Robbie, I was like, oh, my gosh, that means I never have to go to school ever, right? And uh, I went up to him next Sunday, and then, you know, that's kind of how it happened. And he, I, I said, hey, teach me what you can do. I will help you. I'll clean for you. I'll do whatever it, I can. And then, you know, I started going to his house on a daily basis and after school every day. And yeah. that's kind of how I started, you know, falling in love with the industry. And then uh, a few years later, I got some licenses. But, you know, I started making money out of out of the stuff that he was doing because of the fact I was like, I'm like, if I could help you get clients. He had a little marketing company on the side that he would actually help people to do uh, like signage and stuff like that. I said, I can help you pay with your marketing and, and stuff like that. And little by little, it started adding up. And I remember he's like, I can't believe I'm paying you this much. I'm like, well, the business that I'm bringing you, it's a, it's a lot of business too. And that's kind of how I got it started. Uh, 18 years old now, uh, I met my first millionaire mentor. Uh, this is, I, I actually met him at a, you know, uh, it, it was really interesting. I, I had a chance to meet him and, and, and Mike's, my vision even expanded even greater, right? Because he had not only the money, but he also had the, the, the skill set and, and, and the mindset. And, you know, he told me, taught me things that I didn't think you needed to go and do with money. So many times people think it's just about making money and who makes more money, but it doesn't work that way. It works, you know, what, hap- what has to happen is you have to have the right tools, the right environment. You have to, you know, y- y- disciplines, right? That, the, the habits, right? Those are the things that he taught me. And I was so grateful that the fact that, that happened. And that's kind of how it's, uh, you know, I, I started moving up the ladder of uh, my network to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm on dial tone with people even today in the White House and people that are actually in, you know, celebrities and people that are athletes and, and stuff like that today. And um, I personally believe that it all just comes back down to one thing that helped me out in my life, which is giving people value. I didn't know that I was doing that. You know what I mean? When I first met this guy when I was 16, I said, what's one thing that you need help in your house? And I remember going the first time and his house was a complete mess, right? Like his whole office. So I, that was my form of giving value. You know what I mean? So in one form or other, giving value was one of the most significant things that I could do for people. And that's something that everybody now teaches today, I guess. You know what I mean? Giving people value. And, and yeah, I know that's a yeah. resource for me, so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my one of my biggest challenges uh, as an entrepreneur was uh, like I'm a very value giving person. When you know, when I talk to somebody one on one, I'm usually very good. Uh, but then once my business kind of grew and got to a point where I actually spend ninety five percent of the day not talking to to people directly, it became very difficult to figure out how to scale value, if, if you know what I mean. Because like, you don't have that one-on-one personal connection. You have to kind of trust the people below you to have that with uh, people. Uh, and I understand you've grown your, your company uh, substantially and reached a point where you're at that point. So you're like the executive now, right? You're not offering people, uh, let's say, value one-on-one, uh, but you trust to have people, I mean, unless it's a very valuable client, but you kind of trust people around you to do that for you, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And one thing you never want to go ahead and lose, it's those, it's those things that will ultimately help you create relationships, right? Too many people out there are talking about networking, right? It's like networking, networking, and they go out there and they go to events. Um, you know, how many times have I gone somewhere and they're like, hey, you and I didn't get to connect with each other. Here's my business card. And I'm like, okay, but what why i don't know you we we didn't talk to each other you know what i mean what you do is probably a thousand other people you know do the same exact thing right i'm not you know the chance of me calling you are slim to none and slim's probably you know somewhere out you know not 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 here right so one of the things that you i think is very important is for you to be able to go and develop a connection right uh you know and a lot of times you're able to go and do that with a little bit of a vulnerability and intimacy, right? A lot of times when we think about intimacy, we're thinking about it in a romantic way. But if, for example, you've gone through something that I have gone through and you and I can relate that story in similar ways, now there's intimacy between two people. I'm most likely to do something greater for you and vice versa if there's some sort of intimacy because there's a level of connection that's in there. And that comes through different forms, whether that's stories or, you know, similar stories or similar, similar, you know, similar ways of growing up, 
right? Those are the things that happens. And, and so that's, that's what I'm grateful for is the fact that I always still today is still do that. And one thing that many people don't do is still are able to be thoughtful, right? Like I've got, for example, one of my mentors today, he is a huge fan of Alexander the Great. He's in, incredibly big in Greek mythology. This is a guy that, you know, uh, really there's, most people would be like, I can't really gift anything to that guy. Right. I can't really, you know, what kind of value can I bring to this guy? But dude, I, I, this guy, I was so happy when I would send him, you know, uh, you know, coming from me, coming from my heart, you know, an item from, you know, like a memorabilia or even a T-shirt that would be Alexander the Great shirt. Right. And what that does, he helps you create connections with people. Right. And, and when you're thinking about that, not just the kind of value that you can bring to others, but how to go ahead and develop a connection. Uh, your odds of succeeding in business overall are a lot higher doing it that way and thinking about it from that perspective too. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I know, I know for me, uh, one of my biggest uh, breakthroughs was when I just started treating people uh, kind of in a very blase way. Uh, it was actually like, I had a really good period in my business where things just went up very quickly. And then yeah. I, I just got, you know how you experience a lot of success, you tend to get a bit jaded, like in a negative way where you're just not very um, excited anymore and things are just a bit more boring. So yeah. I, I ended up talking to some multimillionaires, like some extremely successful entrepreneurs, and I wasn't aware that they were as successful as they were. And, and uh, they responded to me the same way that a regular prospect would. And that, that kind of gave me the first sign that, wait, maybe if you talk to highly successful people, just like you would talk to a regular prospect that you're serving, you know, make a connection, build value, find commonalities, they'll connect with you the same way. So it's almost like we put this pedestal on people and we say, oh, this person is special. We need to, I need to treat him differently. And then what happens is you, you kind of block any chance of a connection actually blossoming in the first place. You're absolutely right. I mean, you never know and you want to treat everybody with kindness, with respect, and at the same time, treating them like they're human beings. Most of my friends today that are very, very successful that we have a very good connection with, I didn't know how successful they were when I first met them. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, we have a friend in common, the guy that you had brought up with my buddy that started RSD, Nick Coe. You know, his girlfriend used to, his, you know, his, his wife at the time used to work at my company. And he's like, hey, I want you to meet my boyfriend, you know, and then we started connecting and being good friends. And we went out to eat at P.F. Chang's and we just connected. I had no idea the size of business that he had, what he did. Uh, same thing with my other, I have another, one of my very, very close friends, Walter O'Brien, fifth highest IQ in the world. You know, at one point it was California's youngest billionaire. When we first met, you know, the first many, many times, I think for the first two years, we just liked each other, you know, we just like, he was a cool dude to me. And, you know, we had a lot of similarities. We would always see each other at events. Yeah. One time we go to Mel's diner and uh, the guy at the, the host of the, you know, he's like, are you Walter Ryan? You know, the guy from Scorpion, um, you know, you see a story, story about a Scorpion. Uh, he, call, you know, he helps the world. He's actually a true story about his life story. And, uh, and I was like, so what do you do, bro? You know, and it's like, oh, you're Scorpion, CBS, 30 million viewers. Da, da, da. I was like, oh, that's you, right? I, this was years into it. So, yeah, so I guess the point of this is that you never know. And, you know, you never know not only who they are, but you never know also who they're going to become as well, right? Um, how many times have I, have I met people before that were in, you know, a, a beginning positions in their jobs, and then years later, they're the manager of a hotel or something. And I go back to the same hotel and they remember me treating them well when they were barely starting at their jobs. You know what I mean? That, that happened to me actually yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a hotel, very nice hotel in Puerto Rico that I would go to, right? This guy started in us, the, you know, he was just, you know, kind of helping you check in. He was now the manager of a hotel. You know, when I go over there, it's like, we're like bros because, you know, I treated them the exact same way with total respect and stuff like that. To the point where if there's no rooms or I'll be get treated VI, very VIP, just because I build a relationship with them for a very, very long time. So that's something to definitely keep in mind is that I always stay alert with people that you meet. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, for me, I have a, a rule uh, where I have a call scheduled with somebody. I do the most minimal amount of research possible. 
like just enough to know, okay, just very generally who this person is uh, because I don't want to know because I know if I know too much ahead of time, uh, I'm, I'm actually at a disadvantage. So it's, it's different for people. You know, some people are more tactical. Uh, yeah. With me, the less I know coming in, just, you know, just the minimum commonalities, the better. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, when I researched somebody before talking to them, just like when we talked for the first time, I was like, oh, cool. We both, you know, had that connection. And so that was really good. I wasn't searching for like, how successful is Adam? Like, is he more successful than me or how much money does he have? Like, I was just looking for what do we have in common? So I think, I think maybe that's a good, uh, a good tip for I people. Think definitely keep it genuine. You know what I mean? To be able to, and that's, that's something that you are striving to go ahead and do is become always genuine not put on an extra, you know, not out of makeup to the, you know, to, to the value that you can give them because the genuinity is enough. You know what I mean? And ultimately that's what people are looking for is somebody to be real with them and be genuine. You know what I mean? And that's something that as people, especially successful people, um, you know, that, that's very appreciative. You know what I mean? When people are genuine with you, they're not nice to you just because of, you know, who you are or, you know, what your last name is or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's definitely epic that you have that also. Yeah. But I think there's also another element that um, is like, you need to know your pitch. You know what I mean? So you need to like, know who am I, what am I here for? What value can I give? And you need to have that down. Like you can, you know, pull it up at 2 AM without thinking like da, 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 da. You need to have that down so well that you can actually connect with that person because then, you know, when the questions actually come and there's an opportunity to create a value for that person, you're like, you're there. So, so you know what I mean? You can be there with them uh, and, and, and you know, you've got your ammunition ready. 100%, man. 100%. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay. So tell me how, how do you actually help people? You know, you said you help them with uh, getting tools of the super rich and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not that, Financial, financially savvy. Like for me, my, my plan is just build a business that makes a, an insane amount of money uh, and figure it out later <laughs> after you're, uh, you know, just invest everything back in the, in the business or you're not going to pay a lot of taxes and, you know, hopefully make it into, into a very, very uh, successful business and, you know, worry about the rest after yeah. that. Uh, I, maybe I, that's probably a bad I, plan, but... Uh, <laughs> It's a good plan, but at the same time, you also want to be able to go in and have uh, multiple streams, not only of income, but also of resources and also of things that will go ahead and bring you well to, to, you know, towards uh, your life and where you're going with it. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of tools and um, strategies out there that you could use. You know, how, for me, for example, as I started getting, uh, as I started learning more and more and more and be more um, familiar with the industry, I learned that the industry only caters to people with a lot of money, right? And I'm not talking about, you know, guys making, you know, seven, six figure incomes. I'm talking about ultra wealthy people or ultra, you know, successful companies like Wells Fargo and all these companies out there that, help, that really help out each other. And I was thinking to myself, what about, what about average entrepreneur? What about, you know, a small business owner like my dad, for example, right? And the reality of it is the fact that most people out there don't know when it, anything when it comes to money, right? If somebody's, for example, you know, a person that's self-employed, at least somebody who's employed, they already have like a, you know, they have some sort of something, right? A 401k, right? And, and, you know, people sometimes, you know, they don't know, they don't do their research as far as what are some of the things that they can do, right? They cross their fingers, they hope it's going to go ahead and be there, you know, later when they retire. They have no idea how it works, right? And ultimately, even a 401k, for example, was not created to be a retirement plan. It was created to be a supplement for retirement plans, right? And right now, if somebody's a business owner, for example, they don't even know what to do or where to go. They can create, try to get, create a solo 401k and stuff like that. But, you know, even, even thinking about the investments that are out there, for example, we talked to an average typical person who's, you know, who's a 401k. We ask him, let's say, what are some of the disadvantages of your 401k? Everybody will say the same thing. Taxes, penalties, age restrictions. The fact that if I pull that money out, I have to pay that money back, right? Well, there are plants out there where your money, Robbie, can actually grow with having to pay taxes. You can pull your money out with having to pay taxes. You could actually have liquidity after your first few years. You don't have to pay that money back like you would in a 401k. Not only that, but there's actually a guaranteed percentage on your money, which means your, mar your money's never gonna go down in value 
mm -hmm. right? Your money. So if there's, you have access to full market potential. So if the market goes down, my clients never lose a dime. If the market goes up, they still have full market potential. Are these products new? No, they've been around for decades and decades and decades. The problem is that when these plants were created, we're actually able to go ahead and be only for the ultra wealthy, right? Some of these plants are even, you know, they, they don't even, if you were to go ahead and get sued, right? They don't actually, nobody can even touch this money because of the fact it's not regular investment type of capital, right? So when, when we sit down with, with somebody, we look at their goals, what they want to do, how much they want to accomplish. And what we do is we formulate a, a you know, exact game plan of execution with the tools and strategies. And I've got access to some of the biggest companies in the world, right? Multi-billion dollar companies that will go ahead and give my clients access to those products, regardless of what their net worth is. So if they are business owners or they are self-employed or they are, um, you know, people that are employers or they have employees, for example, you know, no matter what it is, I, I can go ahead and actually help them. And I've sat down with countless people uh, people that were celebrities, people that were uh, professional athletes, uh, after they were done or their contract was up, how many, this has happened dozens of times, where they're like, Adam, I knew how to make money. I don't know how to go ahead and keep it, let alone grow it, right? So they essentially really need somebody like myself, you know, or somebody in, you know, in, 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 in my company to go ahead and help them establish, you know, a, a bulletproof type of plan that will help them ultimately get to where they want to go ahead and get to. And what's great about this is that none of this money, they don't, you know what's cool about it is that in this particular uh, cases, uh, they don't pay me any money. They don't pay any of my advisors any money. We do, the companies will take care of us, you know, enough when it comes to it. All we do is, and I'm a big believer of this, is giving people free education, showing them exactly what to do with their money, knowing where to go, what are some of the tools and access things that they can go ahead and do and have. And with that, you know, we're able to go to really create a nice game plan for themselves and, and for their families and ultimately, you know, the, you know, the things that they want to do themselves. So, so for somebody like me, who's, uh, you know, let's say we've got uh, like three types of people. Uh, we got the person with no plan and no income. We've got the person with high income and we've got the person with a uh, good plan, but not high income. Uh, what would you say is the right way to go about it? Because I know the way that I operate and a lot of our clients operate that way as well is basically just focus on increasing the revenue, just building a big business. But that kind of sounds to me like the athlete story. Of course, it's a bit different because I'm not employed by somebody. So, you know, I can't be fired. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So um, what would be the steps? To, like, do you think you first build the income and then you go to an expert or do you think you go to an expert from day one? What do you think are like the right I think steps? It goes both well and you know both together as a as a as a twin marriage. The you know your income growth needs to be a correlation of your conversations with multiple people when it comes to mining different strategies. Mm -hmm. Yes, I I have met people before where they're like, hey, you know, I have this business. I'm putting a hundred percent of my money into this business and stuff like that. But that's essentially putting all your eggs in one basket. Right, that's what it really comes back down to, and if that one, if that goes away for, and it could go down for so many reasons, right? And most people are into this human belief. Well, I know that could happen, but that's probably not going to happen to me, and that's cool, right? Because sometimes it doesn't happen. But reality of it is the fact: how many times, how many bits have I have I seen where they've been killed by by, by you know auditors, uh, a lawsuit, or maybe a, a downside of the market, or the fact that. You know the market you know for example right now with this whole thing with between elections and all those different things there's people that depending on who gets elected that will massively affect their business because of the way they do things right so if they're just doing it with their business and they're like you know what thousand bucks comes from here i can use a hundred to eat and the nine hundred dollars will go to my business that is a plan but if you're able to go ahead and really sit down and say, okay, I need to allocate this money for this. I need to allocate this money for this growth and be able to go ahead and have a diversified portfolio, you know, then you're able to go ahead and have it. So that way, if that one thing breaks, you know, that's not your only thing. You know what I mean? You're able to go ahead and do that. And you, and I've, I've talked to this to people in the form of their business or at the same time where they're putting all their money into their house right? Because sometimes people do that. They just do it in different forms. They're like, I want to put every single dime that I have into my house. 
and you know so i can pay off my house like they, that used to be the american dream right yeah. but then what happens you know they not now their money is attached to their house or like their business right and and that's what it's attached to and, and that could happen many many things but if you have multiple spare tires more full floaties around your around your boat right uh you know if you were to go ahead and have a massive yacht you don't want an execution boat you you know if you could afford it, you could have, you could have a heli so if turbulence comes you're able to bounce out of there right you're able to go ahead and do that so you want to have the mindset of being able to go ahead and have multiple windows i always talk to people about multiple windows if you have one big window at your house and that could be your business or your whatever it is if somebody breaks it you have to replace the whole window but if you break that and you separate those into multiple little squares and somebody breaks one window you're like okay well that happened but you know i have many other windows that i can go ahead and have i see to replace that one little you know what i mean so yeah i think one of one of the most uh inspiring sentences i've ever heard was from grant cardone uh where he said uh you want to create a situation where no single disaster or even multiple disasters together uh can destroy your financial status yep that's uh i mean that that's an insane like is it is it like a you know a, a like a pipe dream or something that only i, I mean do, do you need to be like a seven eight nine figure earner to create a situation like that where you're protected from you know many many uh angles or is that something that's like actually i think that if you don't do it correctly what it does is how many people throughout my career I have met them where they were making a lot of money, but they were just really broke at a higher level. Because see what happens when people make more money, they end up getting the bigger house, they end up getting the faster car, and it is where at the end of the day, I mean, I, I literally know people today that are struggling to go ahead and actually be able to go ahead and take their girlfriends out on dates because of the fact that they're like, their Lambo payment just came in. You know what I mean? Or their house yeah. or, their, you know, these things have happened. So. I don't really see people thinking about it from a wealthy perspective. Now, that doesn't mean I'm asking people to go ahead and be like the millionaire next door where, you know, like, like an old Warren Buffett where you've been driving the same car and living, you know, have that very, very um, kind of chill lifestyle. You don't need to be a miser. Right. You need to be able to go ahead and really think about it from that perspective where you need to have two types of things, right? Like you want your life to be exciting, your investments to be a little bit boring sometimes. Right. Where your hours can be, your investments can be, you know, uh, you know, timely, right. Where you can go ahead and start thinking about the long term of games. So your mindset that can go ahead and be like a Ferrari that needs to be torture business, but there needs to be one that is essentially growing. And that's also, you know, kind of having that quantum growth all the time for you to be able to go ahead and do that. Because ultimately what you're looking for is you're looking for the number. Everybody has a number. Right. What is your comfortable number that and when I look at partners, for example, or business partners, that's one thing that I ask, like, what is your number? What are you comfortable with? Right. And, and, and I want to know what their comfort level is going to go ahead and be. But because people do come to a point where once just like just like rappers where they hit their first album and, you know, you never see them anymore. Right. There's people out there that once they make a certain amount of income, they're like, I don't really have to go through that. So the reason I believe why you don't see people much more successful is because they become very contempt with their lives or the way they are and the way it is. And they're like, you know, the, the, that greedy button is not really there, right? You know, we have two little bones here. My mentor taught me this. One of them is your greed button. The other one is your heart button, right? Well, your heart is what makes you keep going, but there needs to be a greed button as well that keeps you moving forward, that keeps you building, right? And when people ask you, or you got to have this in mind where, you know, anybody that you talk to, they have this little thing in their hat and in their, in, in their foreheads that says, what's in it for me. Yeah. Right. So you gotta, you, you gotta figure out all the time. What do they want? Right. And my father said this to me years and years ago. He says, you never know a person until you know what they want, because it is how, what they want that ultimately will show you their true colors. And that's not a bad thing. That's a great thing because ultimately people can be genuine and honest about what they want to do and, you have yourself have to be honest about what you want to do, you know, to, to yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what, and what do you want, Adam? What do I want yeah. for me? My, for me, the most important thing right now that I'm, that I'm working towards uh, for the last 10 years, I would say I've been on cruise control 
uh, in my life in, in because of the fact that I love to travel. I love to hang out. I love to, you know, like even with this COVID thing, it wasn't really that much different, right? I, I've been, you know, I travel nine, 10 months out of the year. And, uh, but at the same time, what I want is ultimately for people to have had some sort of impact in my life, right? Like, for example, one thing that's very important to me, I remember being asked, you know, this question by somebody years ago. And, and uh, whether it's me or my company, I want people to look back and say, hey, I met Adam Farfin before. I, I don't know if we ever did business, but you know what? I'm a better person because of my association with that guy, right? Or I'm a better person because of my association with, you know, with, with his company and the things that, you know, he taught or the values that, you know, that I want to go ahead and bring on. You know what I mean? So that's ultimately right now what's important to me. Um, I am uh, having a total humanistic type of conversation. Mm -hmm. I am very much, um, you know, thinking about the longevity of life. Uh, that's something that's a very, you know, big motivator in my life today. I know that we're living longer than ever. And, uh, you know, we're living, you know, you know, kids that are born today are going to live till, you know, right now, somebody, a baby that's, I saw this in Time Magazine the other day, somebody that's born today is going to live till about 130. Um, <laughs> Obviously, as technology, you know, gets better and better and better, you know, the advancements will make it so that we're going to live a few hundreds of years old. So for me, all those little things over the, you know, the year 2000 has made it so that I am, you know, kind of excited. I'm, I'm reaching out to people. I am, not, you know, I, it's not just about having a, you know, great life for myself, which yeah, I've been able to build, but at the same time, you know, a, a legacy, you know what I mean? Of, of having something that builds, you know, that has a leg of its own that I built. So that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. And, and luckily you have that uh, ultra recognizable beard that I noticed you've had for like eight years or something. I, I saw your pictures from like many, many years ago. And the, the, the crazy thing is you look exactly the same in terms of the, like the makeup and everything. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. You've got like a recognizable thing going, you know? So <laughs> when you're, when you're like a, a billionaire or something, I think people are just going to instantly recognize your face. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, I've, I've had, I was I always look at pictures. It's so funny. I, I literally look the same as I did so many years ago and i'm like exactly the same <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe it's hanging out with celebrities it's just like you 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 get their uh you know their youthful effect or something yeah i, I heard some something that says the the number one uh, rejuvenating thing in the, the world has to offer is money that's what i heard so i don't know if it's true i mean not. if it, you, all you have to do is look at pictures of people like uh, jeff bezos elon musk look at them when they're younger and look at them now, like all of them look much better. It's almost like the more money you make, yep. the, the better you automatically look. You have like that smile of like, <laughs> it says money. I, I love that. So I, 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 I know we can wrap up with something really cool. Um, I've, I've, in, another really cool quote that I heard from Grant Cardone, which really kind of, you know, those things that you hear that just like bump you in the head and just stick with you like glue. Uh, was he said that the best thing you can do for yourself financially is create a situation where when you're having a bad day, you know, you, sometimes you have a bad day and you, you need something to pick you up. Create a situation where anytime you have a bad day, just you open up your bank account or you open up your, you know, your whole checking and, and your financial situation. And that, that's what gives you a good, uh, that's what puts you in a good mood. So you could have a bad day you know, everything's not working, but you open up your bank balance and you're like, yeah, you know that. <laughs> so, so, so that's a reality. There's something you think average people can, can actually aim for and strive for. I, the number one thing that I get on my social media, the question that I get asked a lot is how do I motivate myself? And I really think back uh, the Adam at one point uh, was very driven and why was that Adam Farvin driven? Adam Farvin was driven because he hated the reality that he lived in. Not hated it because it was depressed or anything like that, but you look around you, you know, I always tell this to people. You, right now, you know, look around you. Do you like what you see, right? Go to your car. Before you walk into your car, ask yourself, is this what I like to drive, right? Before you walk into your house, ask yourself, is this where I, I should live, it's where I wanna live. And then look at yourself in the mirror, go to the first bathroom at your house and ask yourself, is this the person that I wanted to become? And if those things are not where you want them to be, that's enough motivation. You don't really need a book anymore. You know, I mean, all those things are great, 
But the biggest motivation that you have is to be able to go ahead and really not have the things that you want to in your life, right? As far as from, a, from a, you know, from having a bad day, I actually have this written in my, in front of my, on my book, as, I mean, from, uh, as my screensaver. It says, your ability to manipulate obstacles in your psychology is the difference between being power, being, having, having power and having weakness, right? Like, how do, like I, you have to be able to psych yourself out in, because your body and your reality ultimately hears everything that's in your head. Even if you don't say it out loud, it's listening to you all the time. So if you really switch your mode and you're able to manipulate those feelings and, you know, I know many people probably, you know, wouldn't agree with this, I don't know, but the reality of it is the fact that I know many, many successful people, you kind of talk yourself to get back in. You, you know what I mean? It's not so much about how you feel, but it's about the kind of reward that you're looking for, right? The, the, you know, the kind of game that you want, the kind of bank account that you want and all those different things. Even by what, he, what Grant, like you're saying, Grant said, is looking at your bank account, you're ultimately really like telling yourself, you're psyching yourself into, you know, the future. The fact that I have this, I can have more and I can build this and I can go ahead and help many more people, right? You're ultimately not just letting your feelings sink into you, but you're ultimately chasing a different feeling and letting those old belief systems and those old things, you know, get out of you. I believe we're perfect the way we are. I believe that, you know, our maker or whatever it is people believe in, right, made us perfect. But there was one little thing in our software which, you know, was brought into us, which is feelings. And it's been said the fact that, you know, the best we're able to go out and master our feelings, the most successful we'll become in our personal relationships, in our businesses, with our friendships, right? They were able to, you know, and, and become the Zen master, uh, being able to go in and master those feelings because you'll have them every day. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're in pain, that means you're alive. So be excited about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for me, I mean, um, like I've, I've been through insane ups and downs and, and I've been terrified most of my life, just to be honest. Like I've, I've, uh, I took huge risks in my life all the time. And I, I, I just spent most of my life terrified. And at some point I just said to myself, it's like this realization that came to me yeah. because of the stress, because I had no choice because I was so overwhelmed all the time that I just said, okay, from this point forward, the mindset is this, no matter what happens, uh, you cannot fail. Like as long as you're alive, as long as you have, you can talk or write or, or even communicate with your hands. Like, as long as you're not dead, you, you cannot fail. Like, no matter how bad things get, how, what happens, like, you can always try again. You can always do it again. And, and I've had to, like, study comeback stories, you know, people like Nelson Mandela, you know, who went to jail for, like, 27 years and came back and, and, and became one of the most powerful people in the world. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's 90% in the head, like for sure. It's a hundred percent. I mean, a hundred percent of winning is, is mentally people suffer more in their minds than they do in reality. You know, uh, just like you need to, if you win in your mind and you win in your head and you're able to go ahead and do that all the time, you know, your everything changes. I mean, I'll give you an, I'll give an example to wrap this up. Um, you know, uh, last week I had all my stuff stolen um, in South Beach. My information, my laptop, my iPads, my literally—I don't know why I took this to the to the pool, to this really nice fancy pool. And when I went to Jacuzzi, somebody just literally grabbed all my stuff, including my IDs and everything else. And a few days later, I'm like literally soaked into this, and I'm like, I cannot believe this is happening to me, right? I, this is insane, and. I start thinking about a friend of mine that I look up to who has a massive multi-billion dollar business. And I'm like, oh my gosh, would he be feeling this way if this happened to him, right? And then after that, I start thinking about it and I'm like, this is probably kids' problems compared to the stuff that he's gone through. So if I wanna get to this situation, I wanna, you know what I mean, have this, this needs to be something that I got to overcome. This wasn't something that I heard. It was, it was just something that I told myself. And the moment that that happened, my paradigm about it, it was done. I contacted my attorneys. I said, you know what? Let's let, let it all go. 
let's just, I need to move the chapter and you go and move forward. And it was so funny because it was instantaneously that weight kind of came off of me, right? Instead of thinking to myself, oh my gosh. And you, what you learn is that ultimately that's how life is. It is your paradigm that you live in that will alter your reality of the, you know, the way that you live. So that's what I'm grateful for is being able to go ahead and always be able to adjust that, mm-hmm. you know, to the point where, you know, you're looking, for example, all these different guys that are successful. What's the big difference, right? Just like what is the big difference between somebody who has, who makes $50,000 a year and a $500,000 a year guy? The difference is just a little bit more, right? They, you know, the guy that goes to bed just goes a little bit later. He wakes up a little bit earlier. He shows up a little bit more. He makes that one more phone call. And little by little, their income just starts growing as opposed to the guy that just decides to not do it, right? Many, many, many people that are listening or watching this, so you ask yourself that very successful people, what's the difference between you and them? Nothing. So it's not like these are, you know, beautiful human beings, avatar looking dudes, right? For crying out loud, what's the only difference is what, what happens in their, between their two years. That's the only difference between you and them, right? And uh, that's what happens. The crazy part is the, they don't necessarily even like go to sleep later, or work more. They, they might even be working like half the hours that you are. Uh, they just think much bigger in the first yep. place. So they, yep. it's, it's crazy. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> like you, you think bigger, like what you did with the, the theft incident. And yep. then you raise your life circumstances. And then that helps you think bigger. And then, it's, so it's like you just like bounce between the two all the time. Uh, yeah. If your life's not going up, your thinking needs to go up. And then when your thinking goes up, your life's going to go up and it, it just kind of bounces between the two. Yeah. I started with a mastermind alliance in my mind. I had a few different people that I, I would love and people that I wanted to meet in my life. Or, and a couple of them were not even people that were alive anymore. And the biggest thing that helped me in my life and my business is asking myself, what would this person do? What would so-and-so do in this particular case? Kind of like what I did with this particular case that happened to me a week ago. Yeah. It's what would so-and-so do? And you could do the same exact thing, right? Like when you go through a problem, you know, uh, you, know you mentioned, for example, Grant a lot, right? So Grant somebody by me, somebody that you might look up to. So when you're going through things, ask yourself, what would Grant do in this particular case? What you'll find is that, you are able to go ahead and actually simplify your problems a lot and you're able to solve them a lot better yeah. by getting it that way. You know what I mean? I, I, I do just to wrap up. I know we've kind of went uh, a bit overboard, but um, I actually, it's really embarrassing, but I, anytime I'm in a really bad place, I'm, I'm the kind of person that just doesn't go to people for help. I'm kind of, I like to consult myself. I think you're like that too, to some extent. Um, what I do is I, I literally just put on my headphones, mm-hmm. and I go take a walk across the street, sometimes just get a cigar or something, just take a walk across the street yeah. and I literally start talking to myself. So I would literally like walk in the street and I'd say, okay, now you're in this situation. What do you think about that? And I would like be extremely animated. I would be like almost as if I'm in like this super intense conversation. And imagine like I'm walking on the street, I have headphones, so everybody's going to naturally assume I'm talking to somebody else. And, and I literally would like coach myself through problems by just getting really intense and talking to myself. And then by taking it out of my head, just like what you do is you kind of project to another person. I would literally like just talk to myself and I would, but because you took it out of your head, you're able to look at it more objectively and suddenly like, boom, like, like situation I could never resolve, like at the end of the world. Uh, you know, I spend five, 10 minutes just walking around the street, just talking to myself and suddenly epiphany comes and, and it's like, I have the exact solution to, to the problem. I love that. I mean, that's, that's definitely a, a, a you know, a, a awesome strategy to do. It's kind of like meditating when you're talking to your higher self, yeah. right? Have conversations with your, like with your better self, right? Like yeah. your better self ultimately will help you make better choices. You know, people always say, be yourself, be yourself. Like, Yourself as a guy, you to where you want to be at, but who you want to become, who you want to emulate, who you as if, right? That person is gonna give you much better advice than the one you could give yourself, you know, from the guy before. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, because I I'd have the thoughts in my head, and when it's in your head, there's nobody to counter it. 
because it's like in a bubble. But then yeah. when I'm speaking it, I'm kind of projecting as if I'm talking to somebody and then I, I'll say something low vibration, like some really stupid thought. And I say, no, no, that's stupid. That's not true. And I would like argue with myself and, and that would be like the higher self talking with the lower. And again, you do, you do the same thing where you kind of think things, but then you project them against like a successful person that you appreciate. And then, and then that person says like, that's not, that's stupid. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> And uh, so that's so cool, you know, or, or again, if, if you're able to access like a high level person, uh, that's also really good. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Adam, uh, so just to, just to finish up, I know you're offering free consulting service where you basically coach somebody financially and take mm -hmm. them through their entire finances and how to improve their situation. Can you kind of wrap up by, by giving more information on that and how we well, you guys want to go and learn about money and learn what are some of the things that you could do, just get a hold of me. I'll connect you with one of my incredible wealth advisors um, that will go and actually help you build a strategy for yourself and your business and what is you're looking for um, to go ahead and do, especially if it's something, you know, if, if doing something, no matter how big or small, whether it's a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars, whatever a small, small amount is, you want to go ahead and start something for yourself that's going to go ahead and help you elevate, just get a hold of me. You can go to adamfarfin.com and then, uh, you know, just write me an email, contact yourself with me, or I'm easy to find on social media as well. Um, all, all of them is the same. Adam, you know, my Instagram is Adam Farfin, Facebook, and all those different things. And, uh, you know, I can connect you with the right company that I manage or right people that will go ahead and help you uh, regardless of what your net worth is. So with that being said, uh, thanks so much, man. Thanks for the opportunity. Sure, my, my pleasure. You're like the most accessible, highly networked person I've ever met. <laughs> Very cool. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Okay, thank you so much, Adam. And uh, again, look him up, uh, Adam, A-D-A-M, Farfan, F-A-R-F-A-N dot com or just at Instagram or just Google the guy. Like you'll find a ton of stuff from him. So thank you so much, Adam. And uh, hope to have this again soon. Awesome, bro. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you.